Uh, we thank the Lord so much this morning for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, some have gone to their home villages. Some with, um, with budgets that are beautiful have gone on holiday. And many have gone to the conference. But we thank God for all of us. Yes, we have been able to make it to the service here today. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's such an honor. And I want to thank Muruti for giving me this opportunity to share the word. It's always nicer and better, you know, when there's one service. <laughs> you just do it once and you don't have to do it again. Amen. Amen. Let us open together in the book of Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 verse 36. 36 to 50. God is so good. I am so grateful this morning for his love and his preservation. Amen. Amen. Today the topic of my sermon is lavish love. Yes, lavish love. This lavish love we get from our Father. Amen. Amen. If you have found the reading, let us read in Luke chapter 7 verse 36 to 50. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, I tired her. This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So, so he said, Teacher said, There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, 
Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many, are forgiven for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Let us pray. Father, we give you the honor and the glory this morning. We thank you, King of Kings, for your love. Your love which is poured upon us so lavishly. What manner of love is this that our Father has loved us? You show your love in this, O God, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You gave the very best of heaven. You gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting love. Lord, I pray that as we have read your word this morning, you will give us understanding of your word. You will give me, O oh Lord God Almighty, ability to divide your word correctly to your children. And your word will come with the purpose for which you have intended it. And Father, that it will do a great work in our lives. I pray, O oh Lord, that we will begin, O oh Father, to understand your great love for us, O oh Father. And that we will in return love you back, O oh Father, with all of our lives, O oh King of Kings. Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that you take control. Thank you that you move in this place. You give us understanding. You rebuke us. You correct us. You enlighten our hearts and our minds in the mighty name of Jesus. Be glorified. Be magnified, O King of Kings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much God loves you? First John 3 verse 1. Uh, says that his love for us is lavish. Some versions say, what manner of love is this? That the Lord has loved us with. In Zulu we say, I think in Shona they say, Rudo Zikuru. Thank God for Google Translation. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we know that Christ has demonstrated his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we can never say we deserved the Lord's love. We can never say God had to send his son. Because we deserved it. Because Christ died for us while we were sinners. Paul prays this prayer in the book of Ephesians. He prays that we may be able to understand the width and the length, the depth and the height of Christ's love so that we will be filled with the fullness of God. It's very important that we understand God's love. Very, very important. Otherwise, we will not be filled with his fullness. I think for a very long time, we have, understand, we have understood God's love towards us as a group. 
Oh, we believe that as a church, God loves us. But I need to understand that God loves me. God loves me. Say it, God loves me. You, the person that you are, the irritable you, the one who is not patient, the one who doesn't have love for others. The one who has many shortfalls. God loves me. He loves me personally. He has a love for me. And I need to believe that. I need to live with that belief. Love has an experience that comes with it. We know that even between two people there is an experience that comes with love. When people have agreed that they love one another there is an experience, isn't it? There is a communication. There is sacrifice. There is pouring out for the other. There is giving and generosity. You, you have surprises for that person. You think about that person. Like this weekend, those who love their families very much, they've taken them away on holiday. They buy things for each other. They plan and build life together. So also, we must have an experience with God when we say that we love Him. Hallelujah. Glory it can't just be in words. We must receive His lavish love. And I think it is very difficult. Because we think, you know, God is far, He's in the heavens. He is this majestic being. How can I truly have an exchange with But we must understand that we can have an experience too with God's love. And sometimes you can just liken it to your experiences of love as you live. You can take, you know, how your parents love you, how they provide for you, how they plan for you. You can look at creation and see the order in which creation runs. And if you think God is too far, you look at the things that he has brought near to you to say, wow, this is a loving God. And then you seek him for yourself personally. In time and in devotion to him. To experience his love. And to give it back. Because I tell you, the only way in which we are fulfilled is if we find our purpose in God and know that our destiny is in Him. When we haven't found out that yet in our lives, and it's different for all of us, there is no fulfillment. But if we find our purpose in God, then we get fulfillment. And it works so nicely in that as we get fulfillment, we glorify Him. As I am doing what I'm doing here, I have found out that it is God who wants me to do this. And it didn't just come naturally, I had to find it out. And as I do it, I am getting fulfillment and I'm giving glory unto God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In your work, if you know that it's what God wants you to do, as 
as you do it, you do it know, knowing that you are giving glory to him. But there is such an enjoyment because you are made for it. So as you give glory to him, you are being fulfilled. You see, he's not just a God who is a dictator. Who just wants us to do what he wants? He's not deploying us just into the world. But he's, he knows how he has tailor made us. So that as we give glory unto him, there is a fulfillment and a joy. In us. Hallelujah. Let us look at this sinful woman's experience. The text says. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, she determined that that is where I'm going today. She decided. She made up in her mind that I'm going to meet this teacher that everyone has been talking about. She had obviously found out about him. Maybe she had heard about the woman who was caught in adultery and how Jesus treated her. Maybe she had heard about the woman with the issue of blood and how Jesus treated her and she determined and knew that I must go and meet this man and it was a risk for her to go there I mean um, the writer says a woman who was a sinner in the city which means she, she was probably known Maybe she was a prostitute, prostitute who stood in the main road of the city. So for her to go to the Pharisee's house, it was a risk. We know how the Pharisees were. Jesus said, be careful of them. For so they like going around in long robes. They like greetings in the marketplace. They like the best seats in the synagogues. The best places in the fe in feast. So the Pharisees were known for their religious etiquette. So imagine this sinful woman who was taking a risk to go to the Pharisee's house. But she knew that she had to meet with God. Because she knew what he could what he could do for her. She knew that I'm going to meet one. One who can forgive me for all my inequities. One who can kill heal me of all my diseases. One who can redeem my life from destruction and she just knew who she was going to that is the approach that we are supposed to have that as we have been taught and told about the savior we must take a risk forsake all Go to him knowing that he has life for us, knowing that he is our source, that he is the one who forgives our sins, he is the one who redeems our life from destruction, he is the one who heals all of our diseases, and we must have that encounter with him. Just go to him as we are because we love him you see I don't think the Pharisee was inviting Jesus because he, he, um, he appreciated him we can see his attitude I think 
you know, the Pharisee just invited Jesus with a skeptical attitude. You know, saying, let me hear what this man has to say. Who is this man? Let me bring him to my house so that I can hear him properly. You know, he, he, he didn't come with that, Lord, here I am. Come and search my heart. He was still very aloof. You can imagine him as he's looking at this woman as she is busy with Jesus' feet. You know, I determined earlier on as a mamuruti that I need to find out what my purpose is. I can't come from South Africa and be a mamuruti here just to get the best um, seat at church just so that muruti can say stand up my love and greet the people then I stand up in my golden suit and <laughs> or we go to weddings get the best seat there sit on the table that eats first when everyone's very very hungry and get, the, and get the extra bowl of siswa no no I can't just be mamuruti for that that can't be my purpose so you see these Pharisees were they wanted their long robes and to be known in the marketplaces. So even as this Pharisee invited Jesus, it wasn't, Lord, come, I want you to search my heart. I want to know you. So he couldn't have that lavish experience with Jesus. But this woman had that lavish experience. The Pharisee made the invitation. But who was the greater appointment with? The greater appointment was with this sinful woman. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what our approach is to is supposed to be to the Lord. We can't come to the Lord in our aloofness with our backgrounds that I was good anyway. That my parents were already born again. I'm from a saved family. My parents were married. Yes, those things are advantageous. But when we come to the Lord, we can't come with our self-righteousness. We must come pouring ourselves into Him, diving into His love, so that we can have that rich experience. Hallelujah. These other things are very petty. These best seats, being in the church board, because you are educated, because you are an accountant, so the pastor needs your skills so that you can be his treasurer. Yes, we need your skill as an accountant. But as you come to the Lord, you must dive in to have that rich experience. To have have that exchange with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We see that this woman was a minor. But she had a rich experience. You see, this Pharisee. He didn't know of the glorious inheritance that could, could come from the Savior that he had invited. Because of his attitude, he was not seeking. So he could not receive the best from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us compare this Pharisee. On this story with the parable of the prodigal son. You see, the Bible says that 
When the prodigal son, son came to his senses, the sinful woman knew the prodigal son came to his senses. The woman with the issue of blood thought. So you, you see all these things are cognitive. You, you need to decide. The woman knew. You are taught and you know who Jesus is, who Father is, who the Father is. Muruti has taught us extensively about the Father's life. So we can know. The prodigal son came to his senses. We need to come to our senses. And say this is not enough. What are all these other people talking about? What is this deep experience that they are talking about? Come to your senses. And say if only I can experience it. The woman with the issue of blood thought. She thought for 12 years. I have spent my money. On specialists. I've been unclean for all these years. And she thought unto herself. So the ball is in our court. We can make that decision in our minds. That I want a greater experience of God. So the prodigal son decided to go back to his father's house. And as, she, as he approached his father's house, the father was waiting for him. The father had been expecting him. And the father throws a big feast for him. And we see that the older brother he gets angry. Why? That means he was in his father's house for so long. Maybe as the good boy, as the superior one, but he didn't have that experience. He didn't have that rich experience in his father's house. Because why was he surprised when his brother returned? He was supposed to be a part of what was happening when his brother returned. But he is the one who is asking the servant, what is happening? What is this party about? So he had been in his father's house for so long and he didn't know that there can be rejoicing in the father's house. He didn't know that there could be abundance in the father's house. He didn't know that there was forgiveness in his father's house. Have we been Christians for so long and we, we, we take the Lord for granted. It's just a routine. What we do is the same every week. When sinners are received and we see them crying here, receiving the, the, the Father's Some come and they immediately get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we begin to see them doing the work of the Lord. We are not supposed to be the ones who criticize them. We are not supposed to be surprised and say, what is happening here? Does this one who came yesterday think they now know better than us? But we are supposed to be part of that experience. As people are receiving the Lord's love, we should know what is happening. We should be part of welcoming them. Part of assisting them. That, well, that means that the attitude is still correct. We can't be in our father's house for so long. And do not know what we have. Have we grown too familiar? Are we no longer searching? Have we become oblivious to what the Lord has for us? 
You saw her when she was here, and some of you heard her. She can talk. And when she prays, as she's telling God how good he has been from January to December, he is also telling him how he took Israel from um, Egypt to Canaan. And she's going to start with the stubbornness of Pharaoh, all the ten plates, the Red Sea, the bitter waters, the Amalekites. She's going to do and in prayer. So by 5 to 12, yeah, five to 12 my brother and I and our cousins will um, um, we'll be looking at the time. Because all the fireworks will be starting to go. And we feel this cocoa. And we'll she must finish now. And my grandmother will finish at half past 12. <laughs> and only then are we allowed to go outside and escape. You know, she was entering into the new year with thanksgiving and praise. But we who have been shallow, we were annoyed at her long prayer. So, also in church, at home. Others will be annoyed. <laughs> and others will be swimming in the presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Like I said, the Pharisee invited Jesus. <laughs> but the sinful woman had a richer experience. I love, I love this woman. She gave Christ. She came in with no invitation and said, today is my day. Today I'm going to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And she was forgiven. Maybe she was abused and rejected many times. But she she was accepted by the Lord. She was forgiven. And you know she had faith. What she received was of eternal value. She received in her spirit and in her soul. The Pharisee probably just wanted, you know, association with this teacher. I don't know, maybe you come to Mohonitani AFM for the association. The association, you know, with a good looking pastor. <laughs> With the South African Omuruti, who can pray in Zitwana at Dintung. Hey, I need to tell the brethren, you mustn't ask me to close in prayer. I just get dumbstruck and all the Zitwana goes. And I have to pray in English and it's so embarrassing. It's embarrassing because after that, I'll be talking to the people in Zizwani. And they, well, they will, then why does she pray in English? Maybe you want association with Mohoritani AFM. You know, it's the church with a nicely branded combi. They have a mobile application. They have a website. website. You know, they have the Facebook page with many followers. You know, th th there could be many reasons why you want association with church. But it's not about that association. It is so that, you know, we can be positioned. You know, this Mary, this sinful woman, is her name was Mary. She went on to do Eternal, you know, assignments of eternal value. She is the one who saw Jesus, who was the first person to see Jesus after his resurrection. Hmm? Hmm. 
I don't think Jesus, I think it, it was strategically done so. He was not just going to appear to anyone. Do you know that Jesus purposefully he did not appear to some people after he resurrected. All those Pharisees who didn't believe him while he was still teaching, he didn't appear to them. So I think it was strategic that this Mary could see him first. Put it from a sinner woman to being one who is so close. It was, he, he didn't even appear to the disciples first. Not the apostles. But to this woman. I think she had such an intimate experience with the Lord. And she could be entrusted with the resurrected Jesus. As she sees Jesus that morning, when he had resurrected, when he calls her name, she said Raboni. She knew him. I think they couldn't recognize him after his resurrection, bodily wise. But when he called her, when she responds, she said, Teacher, because she knew him. And one of his apostles, one of his twelve chosen apostles, Thomas, he said so proudly, I will only believe when I see the holes in his hands. So do you see that this Thomas had been chosen and had walked with Jesus for a long time? But he had grown familiar. Took him for granted. And though he was chosen and close, his experience with the Lord was not the same. Jesus has told them so many times that he was going to rise. Why would Thomas only believe when he saw the holes in Jesus' fingers? His attitude was casual and compulsive. The Bible says that even Jesus' brothers, Jesus' brothers, Mary and Joseph's children, didn't believe in Jesus. The Bible says that even his brothers do not believe in him. They didn't believe that he was the Messiah. And they lived in the same house with him. With their mother. But we see a different attitude in their mother. She had a different experience. Though she had carried him in her um, carried him for nine months and raised him. She didn't take him casually. No, she would not say I I I put a diaper on you. She had a rich experience with him. We see this when they go to the wedding in Cana. Because she knew that this child of mine is different. Even when it was not Jesus' time yet to start performing miracles, when they go to the wedding in Cana, she knew that the shortage that was there could be filled by Jesus. And she says to your servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And even though it was not his time yet, because of her attitude, 
attitude and her hunger because of her desperation and surrender Jesus did not have a choice but to honor her faith if my attitude or your attitude towards the father is an attitude of hunger and surrender the Lord has no choice but to move on your behalf hallelujah do you see the difference brethren I'm talking about apostles who are close brothers who are close the brothers were in the same house with the mother of Jesus but the mother had a different attitude we are all in this Assembly. but our attitudes are different what will your experience with the Savior be? it was not Jesus' plan to minister to a Gentile but when the Syrophoenician woman came to him her attitude and her desperation Jesus had no choice <laughs> to honor her faith. He said, I have not come to give the blessing to the dogs. In actual sense, he was calling her a dog. But she moved past that offense. She moved past that insult. And she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their masters. And Jesus had no choice but to honor her faith. Therefore, she could have a great and richer experience. And she had, you know, a life and a changing encounter. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is there is are the parts of our lives that we have not given to him hence we are not totally free in his presence in his fullness of joy is your joy not full are you maybe withholding that is why your joy is not full yes we are growing and we are still learning but there is an attitude there is a decision there is a knowing and a coming to your sense we cannot just be disinterested or, or apathetic and think we will get much from the Lord. Our self-righteousness can hinder us. The Bible says that our own righteousness is like filthy rags. No matter how good you are, when you come to the Lord, you put that aside. You say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. I'm desperate for you. We also cannot be numb towards the Lord. You know, because of being hurt by people, to cope, we suppress the feeling of um, disappointment. So that we, we can cope, you know. If I have an expectation of you, and you don't fulfill it, I'm disappointed. But I need to, to deal properly with that disappointment. I need to accept that I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I need to tell you if there is room for that. I tell you, I need to tell someone else. I need to tell the Lord about it. But I must deal with it properly. But when we are hurt, to cope, we suppress 
Then you just become numb. So that you don't feel. So we can't come with numbness to the Lord. Sometimes we just come like that, we are just numb. And the, the spirit cannot move. And the spirit cannot move. In our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. May the Holy Spirit bring to the surface this morning. May He bring every suppressed emotion. So that we can deal with it. May we be fully open. May we come bare before the Lord. Surely he will move. Surely he will heal. And he will position us with those eternal assignments. You know, even with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, it's sometimes, sometimes it's a phenomenon that is difficult to understand. So we have come, you know, we've had that attitude and we're like, ah, if I'm baptized, I'm baptized, if not, so be it. We We need to decide again that I want this. Lord, I want it. Holy Spirit, don't pass me by. It is in you to decide what you want with the Lord. May we come with no reservations. May we come with our all to Him because He is our all in all. Hallelujah. Glory to God.